It's about that time of day again. My name is Joseph. It's Monday evening, March 27, 2017. Welcome back to your nightly newsletter. We're covering crude oil, S&P, gold, euro, and FTAX this evening. Crude is bullish, but a spike in range is telling us to avoid buying these highs and look for a fake out, breakout, pullback, or trap low tomorrow. The S&P is bullish with numerous technical clues in the chart this evening, but the most important clue happened just a few hours ago, telling us to be looking for a deep pullback or a breakout pullback going to new highs tomorrow. Gold is bearish with a spike in range coming off today's high. Boy, that gold got tossed around like a rag doll today. And the range is telling us to look for a trap high or a breakout pullback to continue lower tomorrow, trying to fill that gap on the gold. Euro's bearish, but they just took control, which means we're looking for a trap high tomorrow to avoid chasing this move lower and of course the FTAX FTAX is bullish with a wedge this evening and when you combine that with a recent strong move to finish the session we know we're looking to avoid buying high and look for a short-term correction before buying more tomorrow man we're back with another exciting week of trading opportunities on this newsletter we have the end of the month just a few days away so you know we're watching those prior month levels and we have a ton of news coming out around the globe so we definitely have a busy week before I jump into tonight's newsletter we get a lot to cover tonight I do want to remind you the only place to watch the full-length version of this video is on our blog at sidewaysmarkets.com if you're watching the video right now on our YouTube channel not to worry there's a link in the description of that YouTube video follow that link come here to the blog at sideways markets and catch the full version of this nightly newsletter while you're here please don't forget to grab to join the mailing list right I'll send you an email every evening when our nightly newsletter goes live right download those charts below tonight's video you can have low, all the charts in tonight's video right on your computer follow that link below the video tonight follow me on social many many different ways to follow me on social media I'm always posting important charts links and updates on my many social media feeds upper right hand corner don't forget to grab your free pass you're going to learn more with me in 90 minutes than you will anywhere else on the interwebs. I can pretty much guarantee you that. Grab that free pass in the upper right-hand corner if you're not an advanced member here at School of Trade. And please don't forget, if you're brand new here to the SOT community, we get got a great frequently asked questions page. And I'm always here to answer your questions if you have any questions along the way. Man, oh man, what a great weekend. Beautiful weather here in Los Angeles. It feels good to be alive right about now. Mother Nature having a party in my backyard right now getting ready for spring kicking off here we had the the time change in Europe a bit of wackiness coming into this right this morning session right time change in Europe remember what I said on Friday don't forget to get an extra hour of sleep tonight right really try to catch up on that sleep if you're tuning in from parts of the parts of the globe that uh, did have their time change over the weekend tomorrow night you're really gonna be feeling that so Definitely a busy, busy week ahead of us here. First of all, right, I would be, I would be, uh, I'd be mistaken, right, if I don't warn you about this end of the month, right? We got end of the month coming right around the corner. Now, could they possibly make this a more dramatic end of the month? I mean, are you kidding me? A Friday end of the month, the 31st, right? This, this just screams, right? All hell's breaking loose at the end of the month. Now, remember, at the end of the week. At the end of the month, at the end of the quarter, okay, end of the week, end of the month, end of the, that's all happening on Friday, right? We're getting the end of the first quarter, the end of the month, it's all happening on Friday the 31st. So combine that with a ton, right, a truckload of news coming out, this is going to be a busy Friday, right? It's going to be kind of a lead up into this mayhem, end of the week, end of the month, end of the quarter, we always expect traders to do what? take bigger risks why well maybe they've lost money this week right they're gonna try to make it back right maybe they made a ton of money this week and now they're trading all loosey-goosey right right not breaking their rules because they're trading with house money right so we expect to see a lot of risk taking as we go into Thursday and Friday this week so please keep that in mind it's just this is the perfect perfect storm for everything we talk about end of the week end of the month end of the quarter so keep that in mind right end of the first quarter end of the week right and of course end of the month of March right so there should be big lightning bolts over overhead of this thing on your calendar right because you're expecting traders to be doing some things that they normally wouldn't be doing right so keep an eye on that as we go later and later into the week I should also make you guys aware that I'm going to be out of the office in the evenings Wednesday Thursday and Friday this week 
as I batten down, I'm just, I'm just joking, right? I had to postpone my quad witching vacation, right, back to the end of the month. So no newsletter on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. I want to make sure you guys are aware of that. So tonight's newsletter and tomorrow night's newsletter, the last two newsletters of the month of March. Not to worry, I'll be back the 1st of April and be back to our normally scheduled program. So no newsletter Wednesday night or Thursday night. I'm going to be here tonight with you guys and tomorrow, right? So obviously we'll get you guys ready for this. But I want to make it very, very, very clear that Thursday and Friday are expected to be an uptick in the volatility, a downtick in the volume as we go into the, again, end of the month and end of that first quarter. We got a little bit of a taste of it today, right? Marks got tossed around like rag dolls a little bit at the beginning of the session today. But I, I kind of blame that on the on the daylight saving shift, right? That the the, uh, the time shift uh, across the uh, across the globe. So it's tough to tell how tomorrow is going to look, right? You know, again, today we had that time shift coming in after a weekend of time shift. It was easy. To, it was easy to kind of pass the buck, right? That way. So we'll see how tomorrow looks some additional things to think to think about this week tomorrow's pretty much wide open right tomorrow's pretty much wide open we don't have anything coming out tonight right nothing to worry about tonight in the in the overnight asian session tomorrow we got the international trade tomorrow morning at 8 30 and that's pretty much all we're going to worry about tomorrow as far as tomorrow's news go wednesday we then go into of course right the old article 50s being being hit right they're pressing the exit right the uh, the brexit button uh on wednesday march 29th Tough to tell how much impact we're going to have. I'm sure a lot of markets have already priced that in. You know, I doubt traders are waiting for Wednesday to get into these positions. I'm sure they're already in those positions right now. So I would imagine it's probably going to have a little bit of hoopla, but probably not that much as you might expect just because, again, we've known about this for about a week now, right? We talked about that uh, last week on the newsletter. So again, Monday, Tuesday, I'll be with you guys here Monday, Tuesday, right, for the newsletter, and then Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, right, I won't be, I won't be sending out our newsletter. I never do on Fridays anyways, but again, Thursday, and right, Wednesday and Thursday's newsletter, right, I'm going to be out of the office uh, spending some time with family and friends, and you know, it's a good idea to take that, what we call strategic break from the desk every once in a while, and I plan on executing that plan and taking my strategic break on, right, on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday of this week as we go into this end of the right end of the month and end of the quarter okay so got to be aware of later on this week again Monday Tuesday Wednesday I think are your are your full session opportunities this week and tomorrow of course right we'll be ready for tomorrow 8 30 a.m. Eastern time and get the international trade and don't forget we'll see you guys tomorrow in the trade room at 8 o'clock Eastern time and we'll and we'll do it all together all right, guys, let's jump right in. We got a lot to cover here tonight. I know you guys are waiting around for me here, so I appreciate you spending your valuable time here with me tonight on our newsletter. Crude is bullish and trying to retest last Friday's high, but this spike in range tells us that buying the highs isn't a very reliable way to trade this situation. And we're better off waiting for a trap or a failure at the low of the range or a fake out breakout pullback right to these highs. Now, with that said, looking at the chart here right now, again, a little bit of craziness. Had a fantastic day today um, uh, in our trade room on this stuff. But, you know, the Bears started off today in a real, real good position. Real strong move down. Right By the time we came in this morning, right, we're sitting right up around the moving average. And we know we're looking for that move back down to retest that low. We had a larger measured move projected down that... After they after they retest the low about you know about 10:30 10:45 they just they couldn't they couldn't keep the the price going lower we saw a two try rule from the sellers one try two try and they just gave up on it and this price just ran higher again tough to tell exactly what caused all this you know again like I said you're gonna see this a lot of these markets have gaps I think Cruz the only one that doesn't have a, a weekend gap um, on this chart right now so it's it's pretty easy to see right this thing really got sent lower and then now we jump back up as we go into lunch well this big strong move ends up into a trading range right you can see it pulls back double top double bottom double top double bottom we can definitely see this is a trading range now we're going to see a couple examples of these tonight right one of course coming again on the s p but i think this is one of the most important clues on this chart right now Let's back up for a second and let's remember what the strategy is for a spike in range, right? We talked about this last week, didn't we? You know, whenever we see a strong move in one direction, it'll be what? Spike in channel, spike in wedge, spike in range, spike in flag, right? A lot of those situations we talked about last week. Bottom line is this is a spike in range. Pull back, 
new higher high, nope, double top, right? And that gives you now two tops, two bottoms, and we now know we have a spike in range. Now, what are my options when it comes to trading a spike in range? There are two places, right? I want to be looking for a trap low, failure trap low to buy low. That's the most desirable, by the way. We want to buy the low of a of a trading range that has a bull bias. What else? A fake out, breakout, pullback, right? I kind of call it the okie doke, right? The FOBO pullback. A breakout, pullback, but rather than taking this first pullback, we like to do what? We like to try to play that game where, try to find that little trap low, right? That little trap low, and that's the fake out, breakout, pullback, right? If you missed last week's newsletters, you got some homework to do, right? Getting caught up on that. We'll find more opportunities this week to teach more about those. I don't want to take up any more of your valuable time on this. So if you missed it last week, right? Trading the breakout pullback, trading the breakouts, trading strong moves, right? We, we talked about these quite a bit last week on the newsletter. So these are the two situations that we're looking for when it comes to a spike in range, okay? Buy the low or Buy the high, but you know, buying the high this never sounds like a good idea. So rather than buying the high, wait for that little trap, right? Fake out, breakout. So here we go. Back down to that, back to that chart now, and you can see the buyers already, they recently got their right, they recently got their opportunity here at that at that low. That's really, really important. We have to assume now that all of the professional buyers are in this move. They see this strong move up, right? Maybe they got in, maybe they didn't doesn't really matter, but once we see that strong move higher, now we know that anything now that pulls back below these prior swings, yeah, is going to be a, a, a highly desirable buying opportunity. This is very, very important because now we know that most of the bulls are probably already in this move. Now, what would it take to entice the bulls to buy more? Lower prices. Are these lower prices here? No, right? Those are not lower prices, are they? So how would you entice more bulls into this market? If you were a buyer and you bought down here, right, which you definitely would have if you were, if you were trading this situation correctly, if you were a buyer and you bought down there below the 55, right, what would entice you enough to get in again? Exactly. It would have to go up, pull back, and then give you a chance now to buy low. So we'd have to see some strength and then be able to show that in, in relative terms that we're not buying high, we're buying low, right? You'd have to, you'd have to, you know, kind of convince yourself that this was a low price, relatively speaking. Does that make sense? Now, with that said, how do we attract those bulls? Well, first of all, right, again, we just saw that trap low. So that's off the table here for right now. Most reliable here now, what I call a fake out, breakout, pullback. The key is get the moving average outside that range. Get it above that 77 area. The reason why I use the moving average is because that's going to define for me we have enough strength. You see right now, if it pulled back into the range right now, pulls back to the moving average, where's the moving average right now? It's inside the range. Now, what is the top of the range? It's resistance. Do we like to buy into resistance? No, no, no. We don't, we don't, want, to play, we, we don't, we don't want to buy into that resistance, do we? No, that's not a very, not a very good idea to be buying into resistance. Right? We want to buy at support where there's plenty of room until we get to resistance. So the idea is pretty simple. I want to see this price continue higher, get that moving average outside that range, above 77, and then pull back. And the problem is, is that most breakouts fail. Okay, most breakouts fail. We talked about, again, we talked about this last night, last week in the newsletter when we talked about range breakouts, right? Trading range breakouts, okay? Most breakouts fail. And so when this price comes back to that moving average, you have sellers who are trying to get that back into that, into that trend, right, into, the, into that range. You've got bears who are trying to fade that move back into that range. Why? Because they know most breakouts fail. So what I try to do is I'll play, right, I'll play that game against them. Don't take the first pullback. Okay, that's highly unreliable. Wait for those bears to try to run this sucker back down into that range, and they might be successful. I'm not saying they can't do it. I'm just saying they're going to try. We know that for sure. And if they fail at that game, right, if they fail to break this down, look for that nice strong signal candle, right, and then buy right into their stops. Because where will their stops be? Where would the sellers have their stops above this swing? Right? I'm looking to buy literally right into the stops of those sellers. Okay? It's, I call it the fake out, breakout, pullback. Right? It's a way of kind of...